<laughs> the title is funny, you know. <laughs> you, you, you get you, you get the. Uh, it's fun. I'll stop. How's it going, everyone? It is Ryder here, back again with another Mario Kart 10 video. In our last episode, we talked about what the possible main mechanic could be within the next entry, which you should go check out, by the way. And today, we're talking about tracks. However, for this specific episode, we're not talking about Nitro or Retro tracks coming back in the next game. Well, sorta. Today is more revolved around the discussion of tracks that Nintendo has not ever remade. The reason why I wanted to make this into its own separate video is because there's a lot to cover and I didn't really want to include it in the Retro Tracks predictions video. Also just going to get it out of the way now, but I will not discuss any of the Mario Kart 8 Nitros as that game is the latest in the franchise, aside Mario Kart Tour which didn't feature any of the Nitros from Mario Kart 8. There will be some talk on Tour Tracks however since most have actually been remade in the Booster Course Pass. However, one was not lucky and uh, we'll get to that discussion a little bit later. I will also not talk about any of the SNES tracks as they all technically have been remade as Retro Tracks in the form of Mario Kart Super Circuit. But if we exclude that game's retro tracks and focus on the other games, there are a few that have not been actually remade, but I'll show the full list later if you really want to count them. One last thing I would like to mention is I will be going through each track with a grade from 1 to 10 on how much it should be in the next game. Anyways, with that all said and done, let's start talking about the tracks that have never been remade in Mario Kart. The first batch of tracks we have up are from Mario Kart 64. In this game's case, however, there is only one track that has never been remade to this day, and it's infamous for that and a few other reasons. That, of course, is Wario Stadium. This track is like most other stadium courses, taking place within a huge stadium arena with lots of trickable dirt piles, except in 64's case, there isn't really any trickable jumps. This course's music has always been so strange to me as it reuses the raceway theme and it just doesn't fit at all. Whenever this track gets remade, they gotta make a new remix for it because the race ray theme just does not work. To be honest, I've never really cared much for this track. While I think it's definitely overdue for an overhauled remake, it's not something I'm particularly anticipating for a return compared to other tracks on this list. Just go race on DS Wario Stadium or something, it's just much better. Moving on to Super Circuit, there were quite a lot of tracks before the Booster Course Pass and Tour existed that had not been remade before. Tracks like Sunset Wilds, Lakeside Park, Bowser Castle 4, and a few others that were both remade in Tor and the BCP, which is kind of crazy when you think about how much love was being given towards the GBA tracks during that time. Now with both of those games capping off their updates, there are only two tracks remaining that have not been given the remake treatment. The first is Broken Pier. This track serves as the more difficult counterpart of Boo Lake, with more broken parts of the track, and risky shortcuts you can take. It shares the same piece of music as Boo Lake too. I'm kind of hoping we see this track be remade soon because I cannot imagine what a full on remake would look like. The other GBA track is Rainbow Road. This is one of those Rainbow Roads that tends to be forgotten a lot and I guess that's for good reason because the others are praised so much for being unique and original while GBA's is kind of similar to SNES Rainbow Road in a way. Personally, I think this track is overdue for a remake but at the same time, I think other Rainbow Roads deserve the remake treatment first before this one gets it especially with how much love the Super Circuit tracks have gotten in recent entries. Now, I don't mind the love for Super Circuit because most of the remakes have been quite fun lately, but I think it's just been a tad too much for something like GBA Rainbow Road to take over as a retro Rainbow Road for the next game. Next up, we have the Double Dash courses. Judging by how Nintendo traded this game within the Booster Course Pass, I really hope the Double Dash courses get way more love and attention in the next entry. Yes, with what we got in the Booster Course Pass was really good, and got what I consider to be the standards of base Mario Kart 8 quality, but it wasn't very much and it took us until Wave 4 to start seeing some GCN courses. Also, we were robbed of a GCN track as well based on the prefix leak which will never stop crossing my head that Mushroom Bridge was cancelled. Listen, it was that track and you could not change my mind. There are four tracks that have currently not ever been remade from Double Dash. The first of those is Mushroom City. This track is essentially the bigger brother to Mushroom Bridge. Similar to the Boo Lake and Broken Pier connection, this track is basically the more difficult version of Mushroom Bridge. There are multiple branching paths and more obstacles this time around with sharp turns to occupy it. There's quite a lot of people in the community who have been begging to see this track make its grand return, and honestly, I'm one of those people as well. This track is quite fun and was the first Tour City course before it was cool. The second track is Wario Coliseum, which... My god, how the hell is this track not been ever remade? This is for sure the best Wario track in the series. I just love how adventurous and uniquely designed it is. There's so many things going on around every corner that you'll never know what to expect next. This being the only track in the franchise to be two laps long is also just kind of crazy to me. I really, 
really hope this track is in marker 10. The third track is Bowser's Castle. If you were to ask me what this track was a few years back, I would have no idea because I thought it was pretty lame and forgettable. Yeah, I was quite weird back then, and I still am now. But the difference is now I understand why people like this track. It's got that more menacing touch that most Bowser Castle tracks nowadays just don't reach the levels of. Minus the GBA Bowser Castle 4 remake and tour. The music accompanies that along with the dark atmosphere. It's a very underappreciated Bowser Castle, and I hope we get to see it in full HD soon. The final GCN course is Rainbow Road. This is one of those tracks, like I said with Bowser Castle, that I would have no distinct memories of a few years back. While I think Bowser Castle is a better track overall, I still think Double Dash's rendition of Rainbow Road is pretty fun as well. There's a few different areas of the track that are very cool, such as the spiral section where you're always bound to fall off, and the huge cannon section at the end of the track. The music is also very majestic, being a partial remix of N64's Rainbow Road music. I also love the mechanic of a star falling onto the track, and a literal star power will show right up once when it hits the ground. Like, that was just always so cool to me. With there only being a few Rainbow Road tracks, including this one, that have not returned, I wouldn't mind to see this track as the main Rainbow Road retro course for the next game. Now we are on to the Mario Kart DS tracks. There are only three tracks that have not made a return. The first of those is Figure 8 Circuit, which is regarded as one of the worst tracks in the series, mainly because it's very, very boring. Nothing ever happens in the track, and it's just a basic figure eight. No shortcut opportunities either. I can see why Nintendo hasn't brought this course back. I would be dumb not to mention, however, I am a little surprised they didn't bring this track back in Mario Kart 8. Mainly because of, you know, the game being called Mario Kart 8 and having a lot of figure eight types of tracks, but I digress. The second course is Bowser Castle. Yeah, I bet you see a pattern with these Bowser Castle tracks. It's honestly really sad that these tracks haven't had the time to shine. The GBA tracks have been getting a ton of love ever since DS, which I'm glad they're starting to move themselves away from that and brought in SNES Bowser Castle 3 for something a little different. DS's rendition of Bowser Castle is also another good track. The most distinct feature on this course lies within the ending portion of the track. There is this really cool obstacle known as the Cyndrical Bridge, which moves in a different direction every few seconds. If you manage to stay on, you'll be granted a faster route towards the end. If you fall off, you'll have to wait a few seconds to land on the ground where a little garden section is present and you'll have to take the longer route. This right here was always so special and challenging for me when I was a kid, and I hope they don't remove this feature or replace it with like a glider ramp or something stupid. The final course in DS that is yet to have been remade is Rainbow Road. People tend to forget this track mainly because it's very similar to Double Dash's Rainbow Road. It uses the same introduction portion of the course, and that's kind of it. For that reason alone, people seem to forget what made DS's version of Rainbow Road special. Personally, this track technically being the first anti-gravity track in the series makes it stand out quite well. Yeah, I know it's not actually the anti-gravity we know and love from Mario Kart 8, but seeing as how this track has the huge loop-de-loop -loop makes it feel like it was designed with anti-gravity in mind. I'm really surprised out of the 96 tracks we have in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe that this track wasn't added. This Rainbow Road holds a special place in my heart as I grew up with it just like Rainbow Road. It would be so awesome to see it make its grand return very soon. Who knows what Nintendo could cook up for a remake of this track. Also, the bass on this track goes extremely hard. Pause on that though. We've now reached the Wii era of Mario Kart, aka the most popular era in the franchise. There are currently four tracks that have not made a return, starting with Luigi Circuit. I have very fond memories of this course, specifically when it comes to the end credits version of the track, with the gorgeous sunset and the relaxing music. Something about that scene just hits differently. The track itself is just an alright course. The music accompanying it is pretty good, and there are some cool shortcuts you can take. But in the end, it is just another figure eight for most people. However, if a track is distinct enough to make itself not feel that way, I find it to be just alright. The next track is Toad's Factory. Okay, how the heck has this track not been remade? Out of all the tracks on this list, this course has definitely got to be the most requested track to be remade, and I could definitely see why as I have been begging for this track to come back. The chaotic energy, the banging song, the mud. I like to think this track is the official factory where item boxes are created for the racetracks. Probably is already officially acknowledged as that, but I've not seen confirmed sources. But yeah, Toad's Factory is 100% needed for the next game in order for Nintendo not needing to feel the wrath of us players. Next track we've got is Mario Circuit. Many consider this one quite forgettable, and in some ways, I can't agree, 
but there's still a few things I really like about this one. This Mario Circuit features a whole ass town of houses and Peach's Castle, which isn't really a part of other Mario Circuit courses. It's also got a lot of nostalgic attachment for me, as this track is where the ceremonies in Mario Kart Wii took place. I also really love how this Mario Circuit is a very simplistic track, and isn't asking for a lot, but features quite a relaxing scenery, and atmosphere that others don't touch, aside from 3DS Mario Circuit's pink flower petals. The last Wii course that hasn't been remade is, you guessed it, another Bowser's Castle track. Okay, this Bowser's Castle is one of the best in the series by far, and is one of the few tracks in the series to have some lore behind it. Wait, lore on my track in my Mario Kart game? Alright, so there's quite a lot to talk about with this track. To start things off, this track's soundtrack is based off of Maple Treeway. How it is based off that track's melody is that it's a more slowed down version of the soundtrack. Just a fun little easter egg for you all. Now the lore is that many in the community theorize that Bowser placed his castle on top of Maple Treeway and burned all the trees down. Hence the potential reason behind the empty looking trees and lava swarming around. It would also make sense for the music easter egg as well, and honestly, that's quite creepy and messed up if you ask me. The track's design and aesthetic is immaculate. Sharp turns, half pipe galore, and the huge Bowser statue shooting big fire ball bombs towards you. This track needs a remake soon, either in the actual base game of Mario Kart 10, or a potential DLC. Ah, Mario Kart 7. This game is honestly super underrated. Before the booster course pass, this game was regarded as the best selection of tracks, especially with the retro tracks in my opinion. The nitro tracks in this game are absolute bangers. Well, at least most of them are. Nintendo clearly likes them too as all of them have been remade at some point in time besides two tracks in particular. And of course they're my favorite tracks in the game, being Woohoo Loop and Maka Woohoo. These two are based off of Woohoo Island seen in games like Wii Sports Resort and Wii Fit. The soundtrack accompanying these courses are also based off of the Wii Sports Resort main theme, which is just so damn cool. The pure geniusness of these tracks is just incredible. Like I can't wrap my head around the fact we have these tracks on par with what their appearances were in the Wii games. They are incredibly designed and are a ton of fun to race on. One of them has definitely got to appear within the next Mario Kart, and that's just the straight up fact. I will not accept the next Mario Kart without one of these two, or even both. And now we finally reach the final game of discussion for today, that being Mario Kart Tour. I don't care how many of you don't consider this game a mainline Mario Kart game, but come on, you really cannot tell me it isn't anymore. Especially with the Booster Course Pass preserving most of its content, and being mentioned a ton in Mario Kart discussions by Nintendo, rather than the spin-offs like the arcade games and Life Home Circuit. Ugh, anyways, the Booster Course Pass brought back most of the Nitro tracks seen in Mario Kart Tour. However, there is one that's well known for being skipped out on. But before I dive into that, there are a few other tracks I'd like to discuss first, those of which being the RMX tracks. The reason I didn't mention them before is I'm not exactly sure what the current status of these tracks are. They are essentially upgraded versions of their SNES counterparts, and that's basically it. None were brought back in the Booster Course Pass, and there wasn't really any signs of them being planned at all, aside from the banner leak having RMX Mario Circuit. But even then, I don't really think they ever plan on bringing that course into the game. I want to save this for a bigger discussion later down the road, so I'll just leave it there. Now when it comes to the more unique Nitro tracks created in Tor, all of the city courses made their return in the Booster Course Pass, as well as every Nitro track in Tor. Except for one. Piranha Plant Pipeline being left out feels like a slap in the ass, but not in a good way. The fact Nintendo felt obligated to put every other Tor Nitro track in the Booster Course Pass, and leave out just one out of over 20 Tor tracks added, feels so stupid. Like at that point, what was even the reason for adding all of the Tor tracks into one game? let alone a pay DLC. They could have added more variety of tracks from other games that didn't make the cut, like Dino Dino, Airship Fortress, Luigi Circuit, etc., if they didn't have the full intentions of bringing all in, except this specific one, which is personally one of my favorites from Tor. Whoa, I need a brief. Y'all have already basically heard me ramble about this before, so I'll spare you this time. When talking about the track itself, many consider it to be a sequel to Piranha Plant Slide, which I also think of it that way too. Both are peak tracks and are very similar in theming and music. There are two distinct paths which lead to more unique choices on which one to choose since there are different kinds of obstacles and challenges to face. Also, this track introduced the fuzzy enemies into Mario Kart, which are so cool seeing as an obstacle on a racetrack. While this track didn't make it into the Booster Course Pass, I very much expect it to make its triumph return in the next game. And no, I am NOT going to consider this track a Nitro Course for the next game. 
This track is a Torn Nitro, not a Mark or 10 Nitro. Anyways, that concludes today's discussion on every track that hasn't been remade in past Mark or titles. Oh yeah, before I forget, here's the full list of courses that have yet to have been remade if you don't count Super Circuit's SNES retros and do count the RMX tracks from Mario Kart Tour. Also, here are the survey results from the survey I sent out a few weeks back, which determined on what non-remade track the community wants to see the most within the next Mario Kart. The results aren't super shocking to me. The next Mario Kart 10 discussion video will be out way sooner than the wait for this one, and it's gonna probably be the best one yet. Okay, fine, I'll just tell you. It's Retro Track Predictions! I won't spoil anything, so I'll keep the rest a secret. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out, stay safe, and goodbye.